All right, so certainly we're going to get more into details and stuff like that, but for right now, um, I'm just looking at general textures and materials. You know, we're going to eventually need a door model, okay? Uh, for right now, this is a good stand-in. It's just, just a stand-in that I could uh, start modeling off of. So for right now, as a stand-in, I'm just going to plop that. That's going to just have this general material of cracked paint. And again, we'll look at making more detailed meshes later. Because that one's only showing up one or two times, um, I can quickly reload it and nobody would be the wiser. All right, so the last one here is um, that metal sheeting, or I think it's called corrugated metal. So up here at the top, www.google.com, excuse my butchering of corrugated. There you go. Good. Yep, corrugated metal. So we could go down here to larger than, go to 10 megapixels. And that's almost exactly what I need right there. I do like this one because it has the variations that I, I want, um, but what's getting in the way of it is the separation of them. So I need something that's very general and I can add detail later. Oh. So at this point I'm being just picky enough just, just to be able to click in here and see a very good variation of texture. This one, pretty good. So copy it. File new. 2048 by 2048. Edit paste it. Flip it around. Again, I need it much smaller. And I could probably do that. Um, what I want to do though is the trick I did with the wood texture. So I can keep the detail. I grab a copy of it and I invert it. that way it matches up and then I chop a little bit off to blend it okay control E merge those layers down and I want to do that just one more time I don't want to stretch this out too much This isn't like wood green. This time I'll have a big old fade in there. And I'm using the arrow tool to make sure that it lines up. So be zoomed out and you got a, a good grasp of it that it looks good from a zoomed out angle and it should be good to go. Okay, let's duplicate that. Again. needing some of that I see this little tidbit down here and if I cut too far into it uh, you can see that it presents a pattern or it gets blurred in that area. So just be careful on how much you actually use that for. Uh, control E, then filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. 
Wow, that's a lot better, right? Tons more detail. All right, now I wanted some variation of that. Uh, so I'll look for some rusty metal. I thought I had my site up here. Let me go back. Okay, there's photo shoot. Yeah, this is the stuff. It's heavy rust. So I'll copy this. And you have to go into it one time or it won't be the full res. And let's see what we can do with this. Okay, scale it down. I'm just going to attack it via soft light. Much better. And just before you choose, <laughs> you know, you should always like go through the different channels and see if there's anything else that's a little bit better. Like hard light actually looks a little bit better than soft light. Now if you if you get these channels, make sure um, the darkest parts go inside these areas. So you can it doesn't per se a pattern. Okay, let me trim this one up. I'll control E it so I have both of it. And then I'll go like that. So if I get it stacked too close to it, you see that it develops that same pattern or same seam line. You don't want that. So working with it as hard light is concerned, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll switch it back to normal, blend it in normal. There we go. Control E. Sometimes I use the patch tool. Just stay away from white with the patch tool. It's awful. There we go. And I could probably get away with making this a little bit bigger as far as the texture is concerned, just to take up the rest of the space. Let's look at that under hard light. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. All right, let's apply that, save as. TGA. I'm going to say this is roof metal one. So there's TGA and 24 bit. All right, let's go to my end, apply that, and see what happens.
This is a good test for scale. So click on it. Double click over here. So the UVs need to be flipped. So I'll flip those UVs. And there we go. I would say the scale of the rust is a little awkward. Um, if I put these up against the other ones, what about what about then? That's a huge rust mark compared to all the other pieces in the engine or all the other parts. So I have to eliminate the scale of that, get it smaller. To do that, of course, I just grab this to normal. And you see I have some more of this hanging out. If I make this smaller, I already have some and then I can just duplicate it and blend it again. Just like that. Um, eraser. These streaks right here are just going to do me no good as far as uh, blendings are concerned. Still not too concerned about it because it's a different type of layer and it just adds to the color. Now if you want to fix this streaking, uh, you would use a clone stamp. I'm going to go on to the next video and continue this there.